Hey folks, welcome to We Wednesday. This is where we enjoy Wednesday with We Little Knives, W-E-E, -E. <laughs> old English word for small, tiny, you know, knives. This is my wife's knife because I gave it to her a little while ago and I hadn't done a review on it yet. And so it's time now to take a good close look at this knife. This is the Best Tech Sapphire. It comes in silver, and that talks about this middle section here being silver or gold, and then it's got gold anodized section right there. The rest of the titanium handle is this nice blue anodization uh, CPM S35VN stainless steel blade with a bead blast, sort of American Tanto style flipper frame lock knife. Yes, we've got a pocket clip and a little secret something as well. So. If you're interested in little knives, especially very cool little knives, yes, it's a little bit higher on the uh, budget than a lot of my knives are on my videos, but sometimes you just got to splurge when you want to get your wife something special. I gave this to her for her birthday this year, and we're finally taking a good close look at it on this channel. So stick around for the full review coming at you right now. So here is this beautiful little knife. The uh, titanium on here is 6AL4V titanium, which I take it is a good titanium. I'm not a metallurgist. I don't know. We've got this CPM S35VN stainless steel bead blasted blade that looks quite sharp. And uh, the edge is fairly sharp as well. We've got that gold anodized, you know, a little accent ring there. Gold anodized on the edges of the handle scales. That looks quite nice. Gold anodized uh, pocket clip. Two screws to hold it on, which is very nice. A lot of screws on little knives like this are held on. You know, a lot of pocket clips are held on just with one screw. And then they can come loose, they can pivot, and they can do whatever. So very good thing, Best Tech, for putting in two screws there. And then we've got the uh, tiny little backspacer back here. And, uh, you know, it looks quite nice. When this section is in gold, I found it to be a little too much gold. So I wanted, you know, this gold accent around here and then the silver in here. That's why I chose this one. So I like that there's not too much writing on the knives. It's not too big. You know, it says Sapphire there, S35VN there, and Best Tech over here. I'm calling it a full flat grind, although it doesn't come quite up to the end over here. We've got a bit of a swedge on the top here, sort of a uh, drop point tanto. This edge here has a little bit of a belly on it, and so does this edge. So they're not exactly straight. So I'm just calling it sort of a modified American tanto style. Uh, flipper tab turns into a bit of a finger guard. You can see there's a little bit of jimping right there. There's a uh, steel lock bar insert right there. Uh, so, yeah, lock bar insert. And it's also an over travel insert. So you can't push the uh, arm out too far. That's really good. And it has a metal to metal, I mean a steel to steel interface with the blade. And so it'll slowly wear. You've got ball bearings in here. They are ceramic ball bearings, a ceramic detent ball. Great smooth action on this knife. Really like it. Good detent strength. Flipper tab can work light switch mode all day long, no problem. And you can push straight down. But you do have to push back just a little bit to, in order to get it to fly out because the uh, top of this flipper tab is actually in front of the center of the pivot. So you do need to have some force pushing it backward before the blade will come flying out. So there's that. Very, very nice. A little bit radius on the pocket clip here. Uh, that's really nice. You know, everything's nicely rounded, nicely smoothed out. Radius on the end of the, uh, on the sides of the liners here, while frame, the frame lock, really, really nice. The only jimping is this tiny little bit of stuff here, stuff <laughs> here on the uh, back spacer and that little bit on that flipper tab. Blade play, nope. Lock up, beautiful. Blade centering when it's closed, perfect. Uh, 
Good size uh, stop pin right there. The stop pin gets hidden because it's kind of set in with it. The blade comes a bit over it. I don't know if I can get a good close picture of that. If you can see how that works right there. See the stop pin and then it gets covered up by the blade and then it finally stops. Yeah, I like that. Not bad at all. And you can look in right there. You can see the uh, the two steel cages for the ceramic ball bearings in there. I'm not going to take this knife apart. There's no skeletonizing to see. There's nothing really to see on the inside. And you've seen ceramic ball bearings before. So that's that. We've got torques all over the place, except for this body. The pivot screw right here is a standard flat. I would prefer if it was a Torx because standard flat screws like this, they show just a tiny bit of damage when you use them to tighten up. I've done nothing to this knife. I haven't changed the pivot tension or anything. And you can see just a tiny, tiniest little bit of wear on there. I don't blame anybody for that except for the design choice. They should have chosen to use, you know, a nice Torx screw. You know, not a big deal at all. I'm being super nitpicky because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with this knife. It is so awesome. Nice sharpener's trail here to get to the front. Uh, I will talk about one thing that I hope that they can fix on future runs of these knives. And we'll talk about that as we go into the dimensions now. The uh, cutting edge and the blade length are the same. That's 5.75 centimeters. That's 2.26 inches. The blade thickness is 2.4 millimeters. That's 0 0.0955 inches. The blade depth is 1.58 centimeters. That's 0.62 inches. The thickness of the edge just behind the grind right there is 0.52 millimeters. That's 0 0.0205 inches. Perfect thickness behind the grind there. This steel could stand it to be thinner as well, but hey, it's great the way it is. And um, grind angle. That's the negative that I want to talk about. The grind angle is, on this side, it's 25.3 degrees. And on this side, it's 26.6. So, you know, if that's the leading edge up here, it's much too wide. This is the steel right here. So between my hands, this is the steel edge. The steel comes to a tip. It's way too much like this. I would want it to be more like this, especially this kind of steel. Uh, S35VN can really handle being quite narrow and being strong because it's got a Rockwell hardness of around 62, 60, sorry, plus or minus a tiny bit. It's got good durability, good wear resistance. It sharpens, you know, with a little bit more effort than, you know, cheaper steels, but, you know, you can sharpen it and it can handle being sharper. I, I'm going to sharpen this thing up after I'm done this review to 20 degrees per side. So I'm going to have to take off some steel. The edge here that's shiny is going to get bigger because it'll have to go further up the side of the blade, but it's going to be a much sharper knife. Uh, my wife uses a knife blade probably once or twice a year, and when she uses it, I want it to be perfect. So I'm going to make it nice and sharp for her. And I'm going to ask her if she wants this to stay tanto or if she wants it to sweep into a belly and uh, I'll sharpen it either way for her. And uh, so if you see pictures later on and it's got a belly, that's because she wants it to be that way instead of looking like a tanto. Um, let's keep talking about the sizes. Handle length. Handle length is 8.2 centimeters, 3.22 inches. The grip area inside here is 6.5 centimeters, 2.56 inches, so just over two and a half inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 9.1 centimeters, that's 0.358 inches. And the handle depth this way, and it's biggest right here where my fingers are, is 1.58 centimeters, that's 0.62 inches. And then the knife depth when the blade is closed, it's largest right there. 1.9 centimeters, 0.75 inches, so three quarters of an inch, nice and small. The total length of this blade knife when the blade is deployed is 14 centimeters. That's 5.51 uh, inches. Very, very nice. Uh, you don't really have to figure out a balance point for this knife because it's so light and so small that it doesn't really matter, but the balance is perfect on it. It's a great little knife to do all kinds of little tasks. 
And in an emergency, you know, especially with this steel and this shape blade, yeah, it can be used for a small self-defense if that ever came to that. How much does this knife cost? Well, right now, you can get this knife, uh, the silver or the gold, for $99.0, $99 US at a number of stores in America. In Canada, it's costing $189.99 at Blades Canada. That's also known as Warriors and Wonders. I didn't see it at any other store in Canada. If there's another store in Canada that has it cheaper, please let me know, guys, so I can put it down in the description. I've got links down below to make it easier for you to buy it. Um, I don't have any referral links for this knife because, you know, whoops, I just hit the camera. I don't have any referral links for this knife uh, because, you know, they don't sell it on Amazon or, you know, places like Gearbest, of course. Uh, I found a store, um, Lamnia, uh, and they sell to, well, they sell worldwide, but I think they're based in Europe. Uh, 104.09 euros for this knife. I think that includes the shipping cost. I'm not totally exactly sure, but I'll put the, the link for the Lamnia site on here uh, down below as well. So fit and finish on this knife, I think it's excellent, other than they didn't uh, make the cutting edge as sharp as I'd like. Well, it's sharp enough, but on a sharp enough angle, I should say. Um, oh, one other unique feature I didn't tell you about yet. Did you notice this tiny little piece of steel right there? Well, if we pull that out, there we go. On a swivel is a little lanyard hole, and I'll give you a close-up of that. So it just hides right in here. So when you're not using it, it's out of the way. That's really nice. And when you need it, you can just pull it out, and you can tie it on, or you put it on a chain, um, or you know, <laughs> whatever you want, and you can carry it that way. And, you know, it's held on right with this body screw, so it's not going to come loose. You know, really cool little design there. And if you just don't uh, like lanyard holes, you just ignore it. And you're done. <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, so that's not a big, that's that's a plus. I really like that. that. So you don't have a hole on the side of the body, but if you need it, it's there for you. So that's really nice. So pros and cons, great detent on here, great flipper action, opens solidly, locks up solidly, great. The lock bar insert is nice. You know, I've had some of these tiny or wee knives that are titanium and they just have titanium frame lock touching the blade and then they get stuck all the time and constantly having to get something to push hard on there like a screwdriver or something, get something to pry in there to get it to unlock every once in a while, or just push really hard, um, or grab behind it and pull. I just hate that. So, lock bar insert, very good job. Um, and the good pocket clip, it works really well. Um, I'll give you a close-up picture of this. So the pocket clip is built functional. Very, very good that way. Let's, uh, you know, put it in the coin pocket, holds on really well. And uh, if you can see right there, it gets skinny and you just push it all the way in. <laughs> this one's really thick right here, but you know, if it's pushed all the way in, it sits like that. You know, somebody's gonna think you got a pen in your pocket or something, you know, cause it's nice and small that way. And uh, same color as the stitching on these jeans. That's kind of neat. <laughs> and so, yeah, you've got that. If you don't want to use the pocket clip, you know, you are gonna leave a little bit of a you know, it's going to show there, so I'd leave the pocket clip on. And, you know, my wife wants to leave the pocket clip on, even though she's going to carry it in her purse 99% of the time. How sharp is it? Well, even though it's got a broader edge on there from the factory, it's, you know, now this paper is kind of an old piece of paper. So you can hear a bunch of tearing and stuff. So from the factory, no, I'm not totally satisfied with that cutting edge because I've not done any cutting with this. It's my wife's knife. Um, and we're all familiar with S35V and we know how good it is and stuff. Uh, by the way, that's a bead blast finish if I didn't mention that before. So I am slightly disappointed with the uh, sharpening job. Oh, that front tanto edge is done better than the rest of it. So. You know, they need to focus on every single step, every single time, on every single knife. Uh, 
Best Tech is still a young company, so they, they're still growing. They're still learning all those little things. There's no reason to not get this. I, I'm not complaining about that because I can sharpen up my knife. And if you can't sharpen your own knives, you need to get on that. And I've got a very good knife sharpener video coming out very soon by Hapstone. The um, M2 is a really good sharpening system, especially for somebody who doesn't have any other good sharpening systems. 150 US. I'll put a link to it. Uh, my unboxing video for it will be later on this week, maybe even tomorrow. And um, then I'm going to do a full review of it. I've had it for a couple of days now, and I am loving that system, and I'm going to highly recommend it. So there you go. This is the Best Tech Sapphire. Looks good, feels good, great in the hand, and uh, my wife loves it, and that's all that's required. Links down below, like I said. Remember, I want to thank you guys for supporting this channel. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you especially to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.